It's been a while since we've seen you, but a lot's been going on at the Springdale School District. On today's show, you're going to get a glimpse at a very talented student at J.O. Kelly. You're also going to get a chance to meet up close the mayor of Springdale, Doug Sprouse. You'll enjoy an interview with our newest assistant superintendent, Dr. Gary Compton, and there's plenty more. In fact, if it's now, it's Springdale Today. Welcome back to Springdale Today. This is our first show for 2013 and we've got a lot of nice features for you, including one on a very talented student at J.O. Kelly. He plays the piano as good as Billy Joel. Maybe someday enjoy this look at Jonathan Wynn. One day at school he just told me that he's, he was really good at the piano. I was expecting some good stuff, but I was, I, I had no clue that it was going to be that good. Like it feels like it's really soothing, like I guess if I try to do my homework I guess it'll be like a type like it'll keep you relaxed. He came to me and he said could I try out for honor choir and I said sure and then um, he got in the choir and he goes by the way I play the piano could I play something for you sometime and I said sure and so a couple of days later he played for me and I was like I thought it was pretty good because I barely hear the piano at my house, so I thought it was pretty good. After um, my dad put some music into my room and all these cool stuff, I just really got into it and just kept going. He's just a normal 12, 13 year old boy. He's not, I mean, he's talented, yes, but he is perfectly fine being in class with his fellow peers and he's just all in all boy. My dad, he's like the main thing. He just inspires me with everything. He grew up in a poor place and he never had any teacher. He started playing all these instruments and he was the one who inspired me. So I, one day I can go over there to Vietnam and show everybody how music helps people with problems and all that. Uh, one day he was kind of upset and he said, can I go play the piano for just a few minutes and I said sure so I sent him in the other room and he came back and he said okay I'm fine so he uses that as stress relief. Now since I've got a few experience and all that it's really fun. He can do anything he wants to do even if he doesn't take um, music as his career I think he will be successful in anything because he's learned those skills of dedication and perseverance practicing every day and I think he's just going to be a winner no matter where he ends up. He's just some kid with an amazing talent. Wow, what a talented young man. Well, there's plenty of talent in the city of Springdale, and we're going to look at some of the established leaders in the community. Next up, a visit with Mayor Doug Sprouse. Choosing a university is a big decision. I wanted a university that delivers big things, which is why I chose Pittsburgh State University. Here, my professors challenge me. My campus supports me. And I know I'm earning a degree that will set me apart. Become a gorilla and join the 7,200 students whose dreams are as big as yours. Big ideas. Big traditions. Big careers. Start at Pittsburgh State University. Springdale Today is going to start a series of interviews with some of the leaders in the Springdale community. And today, first up, he ought to be first right, he's the mayor of Springdale, Doug Sprouse. An important figure to our Springdale community is the mayor, Doug Sprouse. I oversee the operations of the city, uh, about 470 employees about 11 different departments. Who tells us his past experiences and how that led him to his political position today. I worked at, uh, at Harp's Grocery Store, the, one, the North Store um, off of uh, Bacchus, and great place to work. Uh, I, I, I learned a lot there about how to treat people and how to deal with people and how to work with other people. Um, I thought at that time that would probably be my career, but, uh, but some other changes came. I, my father-in-law was in the uh, upholstery business, did uh, furniture and automotive upholstery. 
Uh, shortly after I got married, I went to work for him. Ten years before becoming mayor, I was appointed to fill a vacancy on the school board. So I, was, I served on the Springdale School Board for almost ten years before being elected mayor. And, uh, and I just really, uh, I, I really enjoyed that experience. I, I think that helped me get ready for this position. Business was what he thought was his pathway, but he finds himself today doing public service as a career. You know, uh, honestly, I, you know, I'm 56 years old, and I've been mayor now for four years. And when I was 51, I was 51 when I first had the thought of ever running for mayor. I mean, it's not something I've wanted to do my whole life, or, or something I've, uh, you know, worked toward. Uh, I was in private business for uh, 30 years, have my own business here in Springdale, I still do, but I'm, I've had to step completely out of it because obviously mayor is a full-time job. He strongly encourages young adults to get a further education than a high school diploma, which he assures will bring many opportunities in life that one doesn't expect. I tell uh, young people now that it, you know, it's not necessarily a bad thing if you don't know what you want to do because just, just continue to work and continue to learn because it doesn't matter what job you're doing right then, there's something you can learn from that as, as in all life. There's something you can learn today that helps prepare you for tomorrow and a tomorrow you don't even know about yet. During his four-year term of service as a mayor, he has run across some problems but has successfully pulled through and has learned much. One of the first things that happened shortly after I took office four years ago was this was the major ice storm, if you were here for that and remember that. Uh, that was really baptism by fire. I mean, we jumped in, and and uh, but but I was so proud of our of our employees and, the, and our departments. And several people out of power, and some for extended periods of time, and and a lot of health safety issues that uh, that we were trying to deal with. And thankfully, we we made it through without any loss of life. He and the administration, as well as other departments, have worked together to start planning how to go forward with the 45 million bond issue to create new roads, parks, and fire stations in Springdale. The, one of the projects I'm most excited about for road projects is 56th Street. We're going to build 56th Street from Don Tyson Parkway north all the way to Elm Springs Road. So a lot of that will be brand new road. Um, but it'll be a nice, fully developed street with uh, median in some parts, uh, uh, four lane. Uh, so. So it will, uh, it's a, that's a project I'm very excited about. It will give us a north-south connection along 540. Parkland, uh, with this bond issue, we've, got, we've gotten about uh, $17 million for parkland uh, development. We're going to build two large parks similar in size to uh, uh, Randall Tyson Sports Complex. The third part of that bond issue, the fire station portion, uh, with this bond issue, about $9 million will go to build three new fire stations. Now two of those are replacements. We have two older stations, stations two and three. Station two is over behind Schlotsky's off of 412 on Dyer Street. Station three is on Sanders down below AQ. Those are both very small stations that were built back in the 60s and uh, we're going to replace those stations. And with all that, he is also excited for the plans to recreate downtown Springdale and make it an attraction to people of all ages. There have been several uh, attempts over the years to try and revitalize the downtown area. Well, we've got a golden opportunity now with the Razorback Greenway. The Razorback Greenway is 30, a 36 mile pedestrian and bicycle trail. It's gonna be 12 feet wide concrete. It'll run from South Fayetteville all the way to Lake Bella Vista. And uh, it's going to run right through the heart of Springdale, right through downtown in Shallow Square. We're the only city along the corridor that will have this running right through their downtown. And uh, we've, got about se we've got about seven and a half, eight miles of the Greenway that will be in Springdale. And about over half of that is going to be along a creek, another unique opportunity for us. For SPS TV, I'm Crystal Hernandez. I remember Doug when he was in the upholstery business and he never dreamed he'd want to be mayor, but he's done a great job as our mayor. And can you imagine your first day on the job, you're dealing with an ice storm? Brutal, right? Well, another guy that got very busy on his first day at work was Assistant Superintendent Dr. Gary Compton. We're going to be back to visit with him right after this.
True to its Christian heritage, Ozarks prepares those who seek to live life fully, those who seek the richness of life provided by the study of liberal arts and the quality of life provided by professional preparation. We provide a uniquely supportive, academically sophisticated, and challenging environment on a beautiful campus adjacent to the Ozark Mountains. Our first priority is the education of students who come to us from diverse backgrounds. The University of the Ozarks. For nearly 11 years, Dr. Gary Compton was the superintendent at Bentonville Schools. A life change, including some health difficulties, caused him to reevaluate where he was. Where he is now is in the Springdale School District. You're going to enjoy hearing from Dr. Gary Compton. Welcome to our administrative segment, and today we have the pleasure of visiting with the newest assistant superintendent in the Springdale School District, although he's been here a few months now, Dr. Gary Compton. Gary, you came from the Bentonville School District. Why don't you, first of all, tell us a little bit about that transition, being the superintendent there, and how you ended up in Springdale. Well, that's, a, that's a good question, Rick. I had been the superintendent in Bentonville uh, starting late in December of the year 2000. And I came from uh, the Milwaukee area, where I had been for 11 years as superintendent. And it was a great transition for me and my family. Uh, Bentonville is a wonderful community. Uh, wonderful board of education, wonderful, positive, supportive community. And, and I worked there for um, nearly 11 years. Um, uh, decided it was time to kind of explore some other options for me. Uh, very proud of everything that we and the board and the community had accomplished in Bentonville. Um, the one thing that we were unable to pull off back in 2008, of course, was the passage of that second high school. Uh, and it's still an issue in Bentonville and they're still trying to uh, make that go forward. Um, but anyway, at the end of uh, what would have been 2010, I kind of announced my intentions that I was going to resign and pursue some other options. Um, then it, it was kind of an odd sequence of events. Uh, early in 2011, I was diagnosed with cancer. I had prostate cancer, and that really shook up my whole world. It really changed my whole life perspective. Um, I had successful surgery, everything is good, everything is clean, I feel really good about that. That happened in June of 2011. I took a little bit of time off to kind of physically and mentally recover mm -hmm. from all of that. And uh, Dr. Rollins and I ran into each other and had a conversation and he indicated at that time that it, it appeared that Dr. Bradshaw might be heading towards his retirement. So. Uh, we talked a little bit, I interviewed along with a number of other candidates and decided it would be a great move for me. Uh, I've always ha had the greatest admiration for Dr. Rollins, the greatest respect for his work, his longevity, his ability to work with different um, partnerships in the community and so on. The reputation of the district was great. I just thought it was a really good fit at that time for me to, to go from being a superintendent and then going through some personal and physical and emotional struggles and then to come back into the world as an assistant superintendent in an area of support services that I had always dealt with in Bentonville but never very directly. I always had people who took care of those duties for me, things like transportation and new construction, custodial services, food services and so on. In Bentonville and up in Milwaukee I had really good people who did all that for me. But here, I would be directly in charge of those kinds of activities and more. And so I interviewed with the job, and I was fortunate enough. Dr. Rollins called me, offered me that job, and I started a year ago in January, almost a year to the day. And I was kind of a, a part-time employee working with Dr. Bradshaw, learning the trade. And then when Dr. Bradshaw retired at the end of June in 2011, then I took over for real. And so I've been at the job full time in, his, in Dr. Bradshaw's capacity as assistant superintendent uh, for about six months now. And it's just been a wonderful experience. A lot of that, of course, is due to the support I get from uh, the board and people like you and Dr. Rollins, but also from Dr. Bradshaw, who really did a, a great job of trying to teach me the way we do things in Springdale. You know, the interesting thing is, if you're looking at it from an athletic perspective, it would be like going from head coach to offensive coordinator, and yet you're doing this with such energy and such enthusiasm that most would say, how come? Why do you like this job after you've been there at this, as a superintendent? Well, that's, boy, that's a really good question, and I get asked that question a lot. I think in some organizations you might say it's difficult to, to go from being, you know, number one down to an assistant. 
in this district, I really, I don't think that that's the case, Rick. And, and the reason for that is our jobs are so enormous mm -hmm. in and of themselves, as you know, as, as our communications specialist and director. You know, your world is so large. This world is really big that I'm dealing with, with almost 21,000 students and all of the schools that we have, all of the renovations, all of the new construction, mm -hmm. um, the opening of health clinics, nursing services, mm -hmm. all of those things that we provide to the many customers that, and clients that we have in this district. In some respects, you, you, can't, you can't say, yeah, you're going from being at the top of the, the food chain down to a lower echelon. I really don't think that's true. I kind of look at my job, of, I have a big world, I'm in charge of that world. It's great fun to work with all the divisions that I have and all the many people that I work with. And I love the people I work with, by the way. I work more on the classified employee side rather than certified. I do work with principals and teachers, but most of my work is with classified employees. And, and they're wonderful. Their spirit is great. Their sense of service is great. Their commitment to our culture is great. Those were all things that were just very attractive to me uh, when, I, when I came here, and they're still attractive today. So You also had an interesting experience because of an illness at J.O. Kelly of actually serving for a little oh. while as an assistant principal. That probably gave you a pretty good idea of the culture of the Springdale schools, and it probably also showed you the incredible work ethic that exists in this district. Yeah, it's, it's interesting you bring that up. I had almost forgotten about that. Um, early in my tenure here, there was an, an issue at J.O. Kelly. Um, I, I think there were, the school was very large, maybe close to 1,100. Yeah. Sarah Ford as building principal, Eric Hip as assistant principal, and, and a, a young woman named Michelle Klinger Parker as the other assistant. Uh, she had an illness that was very difficult. Uh, the school was without the second assistant principal for quite some time. I was new. I said, what the heck? Put me in, coach. <laughs> so I, I'll, I'll do that. And I had been a middle school principal in my life. I love middle school. And it was great for me to get a chance to, to work with uh, Sarah, who I did not know very well, Eric, who I didn't know at all, mm -hmm. um, working with the kids and, and learning from the building side all the issues that, that happened and, and how they needed support from not only curriculum and instruction, but human resources and, and my own division. So it really kind of worked. Our, 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 our marquee in the front had been hit by lightning, and they just couldn't get it fixed. So I had a little influence with Dr. Bradshaw, and we got that fixed, you know, things like that. We didn't like the way the buses were arriving, so we changed that. So it was great fun for me to work at the building level for several months and then take that through the end of the year and then come back and work back at the central office with Dr. Bradshaw and the rest of the staff. You know, Gary, one thing I think that <clears throat> as administrators move up and you move into administration, the further you get away from the clientele you're working with is kids. And you're doing it for kids, you're just doing it in a different realm. I'll bet being in that building, even for a little while, probably rejuvenated you to be around kids. It, it, that's a really good point, um, Rick. The, the higher we go in administration, naturally, the further you get away from direct contact with kids. Mm -hmm. I've always believed as an administrator, no matter what our job, you need to work to make that happen. Mm -hmm. So in, in all of my life, that was very direct. Going over to J.O. Kelly, mm -hmm. I was working with 1,100 kids and trying to take a burden off of Sarah Ford and Eric Hip so that they could focus on more important things. I tried to take that burden off them. But even as superintendent, Dr. Rollins does this so well, so does mm -hmm. the staff do this so well. You need to make your connections with kids happen. You can't let that come to you. And the way you do that is through academic events, cultural events, performing arts events, athletics, and so on. And it's really fun because you get to meet the parents, you get to meet the kids, you get to see them on their stage. Mm -hmm. And it's so much fun to do that. It doesn't matter whether it's on the football field, the basketball court, drama, debate, cheer, dance, uh, voice. It just doesn't matter. Y you get out there and you see kids in their element and it really helps you maintain the appropriate connection. It really helps you focus on what you do that's important for them. It is a large world we work in in the Springdale School District and it is fun. I love going into a building with Dr. Rollins and seeing his face just light up mm -hmm. when he's around those kids. Well, we're lighting up getting a chance to get to know Dr. Gary Compton. We hope you've enjoyed this segment. Part two is gonna be next week. We'll be back with more of this week's show right after this. You wouldn't drink from Aldehyde.
You wouldn't pressure your friends into eating arsenic. You wouldn't eat cyanide. Cigarette smoke contains over 4,000 chemicals, including 43 known cancer-causing compounds and 400 other toxins. Butane, carbon dioxide, lead, methylmethylcyanate, maltitol. With all the risks. With all the risks. With all the risks. With all the risks that come in life. With all the risks that come in life. Why take any more? Every year, the Arkansas Attorney General's Office sponsors a contest involving youth suicide prevention commercials. The Springdale School District always participates. Why don't you take a look at this year's entries? Every year, 4,600 lives are lost to teen suicide, leaving even more people devastated. There's a lot of hurt out there in the world. There's also a lot of people who care. Don't take a permanent solution to a temporary problem. I know life might be hard now, but there's always someone there for you. Even if we don't know 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 you. There are always people who care. It felt like the world was turning too fast and I couldn't keep up. I secluded myself from everything I loved. I closed myself off from all my friends and I stopped eating. I felt like I wasn't very important to the world. I thought I was all alone. There was this particular day that I woke up and I just knew I couldn't do it anymore and that life was over for me. I used art as an outlet. The dependence of my siblings. The love of good friends. It's a permanent solution for a temporary problem. Be strong because you never know who you're inspiring. You are not alone. You're not alone. There is. There is. There is hope. Great job on those commercials. Got a great chance to do well in the contest. Let's look now at what's coming up next on Springdale District News. When I was trying to become an author, I never realized that I would meet kids. And I think that's one of the coolest parts of the job, is, is going around to different schools all over the country, places I never would have gone otherwise, and meeting kids who are just going through the system and figuring out who they're going to be. And You hope that you know, they hear the message. The biggest thing for me is that they hear about my late start in education, and hopefully some of the kids that are struggling now don't think that it's over for them. That wraps up the first edition of Springdale Today for 2013. We hope you'll join us again next week, same time, same place, for Springdale Today.